Yes, it's your girl, Petty Page, back at it again with yet another video for you hers, right? Somebody please tell me why it is 5.33 a.m. in the morning, and not only am I still awake, but I'm out here grabbing receipts for you guys. No, it's all right, you can all thank me later. I am so frigging shooketh by what has happened in the past couple of hours since I literally uploaded the last video. So I'm sorry to like triple post. I think it's a triple post today. I'm sorry that I'm triple posting, but I'd much rather get out a really quick video for you guys. So it's not gonna be any fancy editing or anything like that, but I wanna be one of the first people to get this out there. Oh my God. <laughs> So I'm going to start with the not so juicy drama. The not so juicy drama is eventually, as I suspected earlier on, Gabriel Zamora decided that he was going to make some commentary about the whole Tati situation and the parts of the story that he felt that Tati had left out. This is about a seven and a half minute rant that he did on Snapchat today. Um, I grabbed it for you guys, so I'm about to show it to you. However, I'm not going to show it in its entirety. I'm just going to give you guys the highlights. Um, I think it's been re-uploaded on social media already so you should be able to find it on YouTube etc but for now I'm just going to give you guys the highlights take a look and I'll give my commentary after a lot of people right on the internet after my makeup and opinion video I had a lot of opinions about my opinion was I'm like okay like you can have an opinion about my opinion but what you can't tell me is that my opinion is wrong because my opinion is based on facts right so when I had an issue with Tati's video is when she was talking about me being complicit and predatory behavior and i was like excuse me what predatory what predatory who you could have created that video and literally no no, 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 no. she created this video and i'm like what we're not gonna do is literally say that i'm complicit in a situation that you are excluding information from oh no because the seattle situation i can completely debunk because she said i was in that kitchen okay I was in that kitchen and she's excluding certain information that was said in that kitchen. So I find it really fascinating. And I'm like, oh no, just don't lie on me. You can say whatever you want to, but don't lie on me. That's, you shouldn't. But the main part that I want to speak on is this whole sexual allegation. Cause I feel like everyone's running with this, this predatory behavior type of situation. And I'm being drawn into it because she's like, Gabriel Zamora, you were there. And the fact that you're not doing anything about this, you're complicit. I'm co in what? Excuse me? There's certain information you're leaving out. So let's play it. At 24 minutes, god damn, a whole fucking 43 minute ad bashing someone. At 24, okay, so at 24 minutes, she says the following. Because this behavior is not normal, it's not okay. Cracking someone's sexuality is not an escape room. This is shit that will follow them for the rest of their lives. And you need someone to tell you to stop it. And that's them for the rest of their it's lives long. It's and you a long need someone around. to tell you to stop it and that's exactly what i did in your kitchen in front of gabriel zamora in the kitchen so i'm really shocked I it was gabriel, on the phone. That you really don't care about this at oh, all wait, what? in front of gabriel zamora so i'm really shocked gabriel that you really don't care about this at all and what is happening you were totally complicit with the situation obviously with the video that you made all right i'm pissed I you're pissed okay so what you're missing in this story i was in i was in the kitchen but the part the part that she's missing out in this situation is first off She's trying to, the straight boy thing, let's, that's a different one. Let's first talk about the Seattle boy, right? That she brings up. You try to trick a straight guy. She was there. That Seattle boy, she knew exactly who it was. The Seattle boy then goes into James's DM. Like, I was there. James was telling us this exact story in person. Homeboy slid into James's DMs. Homeboy was like, I'm down to cuddle. Like, cool. He was bi-curious. Like, all, apparently everyone was bi-curious. He wanted to come up. He cuddled with James. Like, why aren't you stating, like, why is she saying all that? She's talking about, you really came at Mr. Keep It 100 with 60% of, of the story? I, I was in the kitchen. James was literally telling us what went down. Basically, homeboy came up, they cuddled. He was a fan, like, no shade, like, no shade. Like, like nothing bad. Like, please don't out this boy. Please don't out this boy. Because later he was like, oh, I'm actually not by curious. I just, like, they were still messaging after. Where is the predatory behavior? Because I can already debunk it, sweetheart. She's like trying to trick a straight guy yet again. What other straight guy? What other straight guy? Just because he's flirting with guys? James hasn't hired someone and been like, you have to sleep with me. No, these are guys. These are DMs. Like there's so many tweets out there. They're like, guys are the ones sliding into James's DMs. And for some reason, because James is flirting, he's a predator. What? What, Tati? 
<gasps> Tati, no. <gasps> the story doesn't make sense because... The last phone conversation that phone. James Charles and I had, he said some things telling me about a situation that happened in Seattle at my birthday, Seattle. and birthday. it literally made me want to vomit. Oh my God, you tried to trick a straight man into thinking he's gay yet again. No, 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 no. Her birthday, looked her up. 37 years old. He's 19. Girl. February 14th. Girl, we hung out like late March. Like late March in his kitchen. So you have that conversation. But then I'm like, it was your birthday dinner. It was the waiter at one of the dinners that y'all went to. And he was being flirty. That's the guy that slid into James's DMs. The manipulation of the story to try to make it seem into something like that. I'm like, no, 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 no. You just need clarification because it's not really a situation. You're making it seem... Nobody asked about Seattle. You're literally putting information out. And I'm like, what? No. What? And you're allowing this predatory story to go around when it was a no, girl, you're leaving information out. And I don't like that. So what happened in the kitchen? I'll tell you what happened in the kitchen because it's really not that deep. It really is not that deep. Okay. So what we were talking about, James was telling us about that situation. The guy ends up telling him he's not by curious. He's not really interested in men, but he still wants to be friends and blah, blah, blah. He wants to do this. He wants to do that. James is like, I don't need friends. Like I... You came to cuddle, like, I thought we were gonna, you know what I mean? Like, that's the situation. And we were telling him, it's like, you have to be careful because people can flip the switch. They can try to make it seem like you, da, da, da. James is like, how? Like, I have text messages. I have the DMs. Like, he has everything. That's why I'm like, what? What do you mean, Pre like, predatory? That's why I'm like, no. Don't say that shit because people really go to jail for that, okay? People really get sued for that. You really want to talk up like you're omitting information. You're a fraud, Tati Westbrook. You know that there's text messages, there's DMs. We were all in that kitchen talking about the situation. So what? Okay, so as you can tell from that, Gabriel Zamora is super duper pissed that he feels that Tati Westbrook has omitted information when it comes to the whole situation with the guy from Seattle, the Seattle waiter. Well, it turns out literally around that same time period, with less than a thousand views when I viewed it, a video went up from the boy from Seattle. Now, I don't know what happened, if he got scared or whatever, but the video was taken down and immediately the video is now no longer available but I managed to grab it and I don't know usually I'm really slow with grabbing information but I was like I don't know how long this is going to be here let me grab it before I even finish watching the video I am so glad that I did because I'm now I'm now I, ha I have the video bitch come and suck on these big ass titties I have that fucking video mother will milk you okay so high key when I originally filmed this video um he'd taken it down but it seems as if it's been been re-uploaded again and made available so I don't know if he's changed his mind or whatever I don't know what's happened uh, but the video is available now I was tired when when I said all this shit <laughs> so so I'm sorry <laughs> what the fuck am I talking about <laughs> Anyway, in the video, he discusses his relationship with James Charles, how the whole thing started. He also shows some screenshots as well. And then to top it off, to validate that he is exactly who he says he is, he also includes a video of him screen recording a conversation that he had with James Charles himself. Now, I don't know whether that's legal in Seattle or whether it is that he decides to film that video. I don't know if that's legal in that state, Today but I've got it. So, here we go. Take a look. To start off, I've been anonymously mentioned in two separate videos. One being the Bi Sister Tati video and the other being the Nikita Dragon X's video. But today I'm really only going to focus on the Tati video. So in Tati's video, she said she was disgusted by James' actions towards me, the waiter, in a restaurant in Seattle. So I'm about to tell my story, um, including all the details and direct messages between me and James. To start off, him and about 32 other people all came into the fancy restaurant that I was working in. And they were all there for Tati's birthday. And Tati and her husband came in and they helped set up the big table and everything so we knew that they were coming. And at that time I really didn't know who James Charles was. I recognized his face but I didn't know who he was. So when he came in, 
with everyone. It was kind of a big surprise. So when he came into the restaurant, I noticed him and his kind of entourage with Jeffree Star, him, so Jeff Jeffree Star, James Charles, and all of Tati's family was there at my restaurant. And throughout the night, James and his friend and everyone, they just kept looking at me, but especially James. And he was looking at me. Later on that night, he started talking to the other employees about me, asking me if I, if I had a Valentine. Cause this, is, this was on Valentine's Day. And he kept asking me if, asking the waiters if I was single and that they thought I was very attractive. Or he especially thought that I was very attractive and he wanted to get my phone number and all that. But the wait staff at my restaurant didn't let that happen. He left and it kind of just went untalked about. I'm sorry to be super duper annoying, but I have to keep pausing this video in order to make it fair use for use of commentary. This is a fair use video for use of commentary. So I'm going to continue talking after this video. The next day, my sister convinced me to direct message James Charles and I did. We can throw the screen shade up here somewhere in the post. I said, LOL, it's Sam the buster from John Howie. John Howie is a restaurant that we worked at. He replied with OMFG and then I replied with LMAO. Then he asked me how I was and then he, you can kind of read here, he's like, sorry about last night, you're very attractive. And then I responded with, it's all good, very flattering actually. And he said, love that. Did not know you were 19. Oh my God, I am too. We proceeded to talk for a while. It was his last night in Seattle. He actually invited me out to his hotel. At that time, I was bi curious. I had never done anything with a guy before, and I was curious. Later that night, he invited me out to his hotel room. When I got there, in the video, he said I was brought up by four security guards, but in reality, I was brought up by one concierge. But besides that, I get to the hotel room, we say hi, it's all fine. We end up watching a movie, and after that movie he asked to kiss me. And I was very nervous, because I had never done anything with a guy, and I was bi-curious, so... I said yes, and we ended up making out for around an hour, and... If I'm being honest, he's the worst kisser I've ever kissed. Way too much tongue. This video is fair use for commentary. This video is fair use for commentary. But also, I'm just sitting here thinking to myself, like, isn't James Charles... James Charles is a bad kisser. Oh my God, that's the gag of the century. You paid all that money for them lips and you can't even kiss good. What a shame. Yeah, but besides that, so he didn't want me to leave from the hotel room. And he kept telling me to stay, like, please stay, please stay, don't leave me all this and that, but I really wanted to go home. So I left, and throughout the following weeks, we kept in contact, and my birthday was coming up on the 22nd, and he wanted to fly me out to LA. And that kind of freaked me out, because at that point, I, th I was pretty sure I was straight. So I told him in a long text message that I am straight, and that he, if he were to fly me out, I wouldn't think it was right if I wasn't attracted to him, but if he still wanted to fly me out as friends, I gave that as an option to him. So he declined my offer and canceled the flight, and that's when he got really sad and emotional, and he took to, to social media, and his response to me was that he thought he didn't think that I was straight. He told me, you're not straight. Like, I, I, I can, I'll throw up the, the DM conversation right, right here. And we kind of stopped talking after that for a little bit. And then he came back to me. He asked me for closure. After he called me for the clo closure conversation, he, uh, he offered to fly me out again and I declined. Because I didn't want to use him for his money or his fame. I thought that that was wrong. And that's what everyone was telling me. That it was just it would have been wrong to go out there. If I wasn't actually feeling the same way that he was. So I declined for the second time the trip to LA. He still went on to say he thought I was bisexual or gay. And attracted to him when I had told him different. That pretty much went on for a long time. Until we kind of ended it at 
I'm legitimately not feeling anything, please stop talking to me, this and that. So in this screenshot, it shows him telling me how I felt, and luckily I screenshotted it because later on he went on to delete and unsend those messages, knowing he was in the wrong and he was guilty, so those messages in the live conversation aren't there anymore. Not only was he telling me how I felt, telling me that I was bisexual, but he was also at the same time talking to Gage. This video is fair use for commentary, fair use for commentary. Okay, so this next bit is actually really fucking juicy. So pay attention. Oh my God, I can't even believe this happened. Ah! And I found this out after Gage released his video explaining his side of the story with James. And then I was just kind of, I was just done with him. I didn't want to do anything, have anything to do with him after that, after finding out that he was kind of playing two guys, two straight guys at the same time. So we have footage of him admitting to it on FaceTime that he was in fact talking to me and Gage at the same time. Sure, what's up? Um, I'm just going to jump straight into it. So... I just kind of watched the like gauge thing. Yeah. And it kind of, I kind of, like in all honesty, I think you were talking to him at the same time you were talking to me. Yeah, we were. It's like, why do you care? It's just. I mean, how would you feel if I was talking to and hanging out with someone else while you were talking to me, right? Like that's. You probably were. I wasn't. Well, thank you for listening to my side of the story and to hear what I had to say about James Charles. Uh, this isn't intended for me to get clout from this video. I don't really care, to be honest. I just wanted to kind of share my side of the story now that everyone's kind of opening up and give some more information to uh, everyone. So, thank you for listening. Yeah. This is Sam, and we're out. Yeah, so that was pretty wild. That's pretty much what has been happening in the past couple of hours. I don't really know what to tell you. Honestly, I really haven't formulated a proper opinion. I need to go and review these videos a couple of times over before I actually come to my own formal conclusion because there's parts of Gabriel Zamora's story that make sense to me and other parts that don't. And also same goes for this guy. I think there was a lot of clout chasing going on. My question or maybe my theory is, is because obviously this video was recorded of James Charles without his consent. I don't know the rules of that particular state. Maybe somebody can enlighten me. But um, maybe James got straight in there with his lawyers and said, absolutely not. I'd love to know if that was the case. Uh, but tell me what your theories are in the comment section down below. We have been a channel of conspiracy theories this week, bitch. Uh, nobody's got any real answers. <laughs> Anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and go to sleep now. It's like 6 a.m. But as per always, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like it, if you don't, I don't give a shit anyway. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification with the bell so that you guys never miss a notification when Petty Page posts new content. Right, my personal opinion has not been formed, but you are free to leave your opinion in the comment section down below. And don't trust my non-opinion <laughs> because I am just petty and severely tired. Kill me, shoot me, somebody, please. Petty. Petty.